I would not recommend. Small town where I prefer to live in London, no thank you, how it actually feels. London or Norway, the city which never sleeps, or the town which gets deserted after 6 p.m. London with more than 9 million population, or a small Norwegian town with 20,000 people, hiking pants on a date, or the latest collection of shoes every single year. Let's dive in. Good afternoon, guys. My name is Anna, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I hope you can see because it's my first time I'm filming from this apartment. As you can see, I'm in London, the capital of Great Britain. I spent one year in Norway and now, after two weeks in London, I would like to share with you how it actually feels. And at the end of this video, I will share with you where I prefer to live, London, or Norway. Disclaimer right away, I'm not going to be sharing with you silly stuff like there are so many things to do in London. First, I spent a year in a small town of Norway, not in Oslo, the capital. And second, we all know how different this year was. Anyway, let me share my personal experience with you and if you have any questions or would like to share your opinion, please drop it in the comments down below. You know how much I love talking to you. Talking to you. Talking to you. Okay, let's jump in. First, it's not quiet anymore. I'm back to my earplugs when I sleep because you can hear the noise of the traffic and also the sirens all around the clock in London. Yes, I know, in Norway I was living literally next to the forest and I have no rights to compare that place with central London. Just an advice, if you are planning your trip to London from a country similar to Norway, make sure you have your earplugs with you. They will save your sleep. Go to sleep. Second, I have to buy drinking water again. As I mentioned in my previous videos, Norwegian tap water is so clean and also is the tastiest water I ever tried in my life. Probably this is one of the main things I'm missing about Norway so much already. Anyway, no matter that they keep saying that the water in England is properly clean and considered to be drinkable, but every time I'm going to the balcony and see the river, no, thank you. I trust bottled water from the supermarket much more here. So you better don't refill your bottle from a tap in London. I would not recommend doing this. Number three, electricity. People in Norway tend not to care much about switching off the lights in the rooms and also that heating terrace even winter time. Not to mention that in the office, after 4 p.m., when people are ready to go home, they rarely switch off their computers properly. It's an office trend in Norway to keep your computer running all night long. In England, it's absolutely different, especially when you're visiting your friends and you forgot to switch off the lights in the bathroom. At the very least, you will get a nasty look. They will openly tell you that you're not in Norway anymore, so please be kind and make sure that you're switching off the lights when you're leaving the room. Number four, lots of small talk everywhere and a lot. You cannot even grab your morning coffee without being asked how are you doing today. I know, it's such a lovely thing, but after one year I spent in Norway, I feel like I'm so not used to it anymore. So now, when I hear, how are you doing today, madam? especially on a passport control at the airport. My first reaction was, why are they asking me this? My second reaction was to run away. Run away? Well, I got used to this sort of conversation after three days of being in London. So guys, if you're traveling to London soon, be prepared to get involved in these small talks until your coffee is ice cold. And yes, in England, make sure you're finishing almost every sentence of yours with please. Please. <laughs> Number five alcohol in the supermarket. What? I know, it's normal, and Norway probably the only country where you cannot get that bottle of wine from a supermarket shelf. But still, after one year in Norway, it was such a cultural shock to see the selection of different types of alcohol, the prices, and the ability to buy everything until 10 or even 11 p.m. My personal advice for the best selection of alcohol in England, I would name Max and & Spencer and & Waitrose. It will give you a great combination of high quality and good price. Just find a decent size of both shops, I guess in local express supermarkets, as well as the train stations, 
the selection will be much more limited. I feel like during filming this vlog you will see all four seasons in London. Do you like this video so far? If you do, please smash that like button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it will show the algorithm that the video is actually cool. Cool. So, please hit that like button. I also consider subscribing to my channel. More is yet to come. Number six desire to spend to spend your money and it's clearly everywhere the billboards the windows of the shops the people around you sometimes it feels like you're forced to buy new things to try new things and just spend 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 and endlessly spend your money and this is exactly how my life here used to be one year ago just constant shopping and endless consumption with no real need action. Thank you so much, Norway, for changing this way of thinking in me. It's like hiking pants. They don't need to be the latest collections and you don't need to have 10 of them. They need to be practical and comfortable. And that's all. Number seven, really traumatic experience for being a blogger. I cannot film myself from a distance anymore. Yes, I find it difficult in London just to put my camera on the ground and walk away while it's filming me. Let me explain. Even in Drummond, the fifth largest city in Norway, I never had an issue with putting my camera on the ground and just walk around it back and forth while it's filming me. In London, I feel if I do the same, I will not find my camera after. Especially now. Unfortunately, it seems like pity crime is becoming a typical event. Basically, people on the bikes or motorcycles can just rip off the phone from your hands if you are not careful enough. So when you're in London, guys, be careful and look properly after your belongings. Always have a clear understanding what's going on around you and don't get too distracted when you have your phone in your hands and watch your cameras. It's better to be safe than sorry. As you know, guys, I'm still using the same gear for filming my vlogs. It's a temporary thing. I will show you my new gear soon. It's an action camera GoPro 8 Hero. It's original remote control and tripod, which can be used as a selfie stick which is really lightweight and a professional light. If you're an active person as I am and looking for the right action camera to take on holidays with you this year, you can never go wrong with GoPro. Also, you can order a waterproof case for it, so all your splashing and swimming will be fully recorded with no damage for your camera. I promise you will be able to record all these sweet memories from I bet that amazing holiday you will have this year. I'm putting all the links into the description of this video. Those are affiliate links, you just need to click on it and it will bring you to the website where you can see all the specifications of my gear. Not to mention that all my channel was built using this gear. Number eight. Jan Tolovan, with its rule 4, became an essential part of my life. It does seem like I inherited modesty from Norwegian people. Example, a few days ago a colleague of mine sent me a text message congratulating me on my professional success. Well, I thanked him and I just tried my best to change the subject as soon as I could. No doubt, I can still accept the compliments, but I just don't want to go too deep into them. I'm just doing my job and hopefully I'm doing it good, so no need to focus too much on it. Number nine, and apparently one of my favorite ones. I feel so comfortable on my own. A year ago, I would never believe that it could be even possible. I used to have lots of people around me all the time and when I had to stay alone for more than two days, I was getting almost depressed. I am depressed. And now it's changed. Don't get me wrong, I still like being among my friends and my family, but I feel like the best rest and also the highest level of creativity and inspiration I can get only when I'm on my own. Number 10, and coming right to the point. So what's better after one year of living in Norway, small Norwegian town or the capital of Great Britain, London? Well, London is still my beloved city and uh, my heart actually belongs here, but I feel like at this stage of my life, Norway suits me much better. I miss the quietness and coziness of my little town and also my solo hikes and go jogging to the forest. So I decided 
to go to Italy for a few months this summer and after that I'm coming back to Norway until at least the end of this year. Hey! And then we will see how it goes and what next year will bring. Guys, if you have any idea for my next videos, for example, you could recommend any places I should visit and make a video about it or anything else, any question you would like to know from me, please drop me a comment below. Thank you so much, guys, for watching one more super personal video of mine. Stay safe, be happy, and as our tradition goes, I will see you next week. Bye for now.